It is the season of indoor training and this video is going to be eight things that should make your turbo sessions a little bit better. Number one, cooling and ventilation. Even if you're riding steady, I can confirm you get very hot riding an indoor trainer. First of all, the free bit. Consider your location and if there's any windows. Naturally, outdoors is probably the most ventilated area, but considering this is about indoor training and you probably don't want to be outdoors because it's snowing or something like that, then have a look at what windows you can open. I have this big window next to me fully open and then I make sure the door and potentially another window in the room next door is also open to get a through flow of air. To supplement that, and this will cost some money, fans are fantastic. Now, this is a wind machine style fan you can get from most normal shops. They cost about £40 and I have one, two, three, four of these in this room. I tend to position one directly facing at me blowing air from the open window and then I have the others positioned around cooling different parts of my body as I do the session. The problem with these is that when you start your session you're not cold yet so you don't really want the fans on and then you have to jump off the turbo, switch them on but there is a solution to this. You can get a remote plug. These are fairly cheap and a worthy investment if you're gonna be doing a lot of turbo training. You plug it into your wall socket, then plug the fan in, and then you have a remote control where you can switch the socket on and off. Really good once you've warmed up to then have the fans to kick in. The premium option is a thing like this. This is a VacMaster made by Clever. Cardio 54, 54K an hour fan. And I think they used to make building stuff, but this one is marketed for cyclists. So it has different power levels, blows much stronger air than the fan behind me, and has a dedicated remote control, which you can use to adjust how strong it blows on you. So there you go, there's some options based on cooling and ventilation. Bear in mind, some studies have found that it takes nine fans like this to replicate the cooling of being out on the road riding at 30 miles an hour. So nine fans is what it would take to properly cool you down. You can see how important ventilation is. Even with really good cooling and ventilation, I end up getting through a lot of water during a turbo session. The last thing you want to be doing is stopping halfway through an interval, getting off the turbo and filling up your water. So prepare a few water bottles before. I would recommend if the session is long, alternating each bottle between electrolyte mix and water. Because you're going to end up sweating a lot. I always have them conveniently on a table right in front of me so I remember to drink usually four 600ml bottles for a two hour session if I'm doing efforts. And I always end up drinking more if I have a little bit of squash or cordial inside the bottles. It just reminds you to drink. Convenience is key here. Put your food and drink somewhere that's easy to reach and you will end up using it more. This one might seem a bit silly and obvious but I still fall into this trap. Stand up more. Standing up regularly during your turbo sessions can save you a lot of discomfort. When you're sat static on a trainer, there's no forced stops, there's no traffic lights, there's no climbs, generally, unless you're using a simulator. So why would you get out of the saddle? You need to remind yourself to every now and then, get out of the saddle, be a bit looser on the bike, and you're gonna be more comfortable. The Tax Neo that I have here does actually have a little bit of lateral movement, but it's still a good idea to get out of the saddle every so often. Give yourself a break from sitting and stand up every 10 minutes or so. You can set up a reminder on your head unit if that helps. Direct drive indoor trainers. So as you can see here, there's no back wheel on my bike. A direct drive turbo trainer fits directly where the back wheel would be. So your drivetrain is linked directly to the turbo trainer. What this means is you won't be wearing out your rear tire, which is generally how other turbo trainers work. They'll generally be a lot quieter. They'll generally feel a lot more realistic and they'll more than likely have a much higher maximum power that they're able to produce resistance against. This one, for example, is a Tax Neo 2T. So this is the top end one from the Tax line and it is rated at 2,200 watts as a limit. Chances are, I am never gonna reach that limit, which is very sad. I mean, you'd have to be like a proper track sprinter to even get close. With wheel on turbo trainers, generally the limit will be a lot lower because there'll be wheel slippage because literally the friction of the turbo trainer pushing against the tire. So as soon as you go direct drive, you solve a whole lot of problems and you end up with a nice, smooth, quiet and resistant turbo trainer. These tax ones here also have the added bonus of not needing to be plugged in to work. So you can literally take these to a car park at a race and warm up without having to plug it in anywhere, which is really handy. Most direct drive turbo trainers will also be smart turbo trainers which I'll touch on further down this list. Don't underestimate rollers. 
probably the most convenient and cheapest way to get into indoor training. They're comprised of a frame, three rollers, and an elastic band, which gets your front wheel to spin when you're riding them. They're a very popular choice with bike racers because they're very light, easy to carry to a race, and warm up on before an event. But I think they're often overlooked when it comes to indoor training. They do have very little resistance, so doing a hard session on these can be quite challenging. You also have to balance on them, so sprinting out of the saddle can be a little bit tricky too. But what they do offer is a unique feeling, excellent platform for steady efforts, and a very small footprint. Now, it's probably worth borrowing a set before you commit to buying some because some people just don't get on with them. It doesn't exactly feel like riding a bike outside even though it looks like it. The way your front and back wheel react on the road isn't the same when you're riding a set of rollers so some people really struggle to get the motion down. Definitely worth considering if you're on a budget. The ones I have here are slightly more expensive than the basic ones from Tax. These are the Galaxia and they actually have a bit of forward and backward motion to make them feel a little bit more realistic. They do a more basic version as well. If you are buying some, maybe consider ones like the Tax because they have a concave shape to the roller so it kind of pushes you back into the middle and makes it easier to balance on them. Smart Turbo Trainers. If you're new to cycling, you might not have come across these before, but they're essentially controllable turbo trainers. A smart trainer can be controlled by your devices, so phone, tablet, PC, head unit, or smartwatch. Generally, it will do this wirelessly, either through Bluetooth or Ant Plus, and unlock a host of different features. Most smart turbos will measure your power, allow you to vary resistance, and let you connect to third party or external apps like workouts or even simulations, which I'll touch on further down this list. Food and fueling, just like when you're outdoors, is very important when you're cycling indoors too, but it can be a bit of a struggle. Personally, when I get hot, which I do on a turbo trainer, I don't have an appetite. So, how do you get carbohydrate in, which you're gonna need for your training session, especially if it's a hard one? If your session is over an hour, and if you're doing intervals, then it's maximum fueling, probably 80 grams or more carbohydrate an hour, depending on how heavy you are. Personally, sweets are the way to go. Fizzy fish, fizzy rainbow belt, squashies, Percy Picks, whatever it might be, they're quite easy to eat because they're small and you can eat little and often while riding your bike. If you want to get fancy, you could use gels, but basically you're paying for convenience here. If you're not feeling hungry for any of those things, then you can always fall back on carbohydrate drink. Again, you can buy Purpose Cycling Made carbohydrate drink mix, or you could mix your own. My suggestion and the one I use is a scoop of maltodextrin. You can get that on like myprotein.com. A small pinch of salt for some electrolyte. Some no added sugar cordial or squash. Make sure it's no added sugar sugar because the fructose from the squash will absorb in a different part of your intestine to the maltodextrin and then fill it up with water to the top of the bottle. With all of these things, a bit like the drink section of this video, make sure they're easy to reach. If they're easy to reach, you're more likely to take them. It's very easy to underfuel, particularly if you're doing a specific hard session on the turbo, so make sure you're getting something in. Zwift, Ruby, RGT Cycling, these are all simulations. So basically, a video game that you can play while riding an indoor trainer. You don't actually need a fully fledged smart trainer to be able to use these simulations. All you need is a power meter so it knows how hard you're trying on the turbo so it can relay it into the uh, virtual world but you're gonna have the best time if you are using a smart turbo trainer. Most of them function with a monthly fee, but the features they now offer over the last few years have become absolutely ridiculous. Zwift's racing feature, for example, means you can actually race people in real time over the internet anywhere in the world. There are even professional racing teams doing esports competitions now where there's real money at stake, proper sponsorship, it's cool. If you have a smart turbo trainer, obviously the resistance will vary depending on what terrain that you're riding in. So if you want to ride up Alpe d'Huez, there's the equivalent of that inside Zwift, and you can choose how realistic you want the gradient to be. The amount of power you're putting out dictates how fast you go, so then you can compare your times up famous climbs to the ones in real life or other people's virtual attempts. A unique benefit of using the Tax Neo 2T is that it actually reacts to the surface that you're riding on. So if you ride along cobbles or on gravel in one of these games, the turbo trainer will feel like you're on cobbles. It'll be really interesting to see where this technology goes in the next few years as things become more realistic. You've even got situations where you're descending on these platforms and the flywheels will speed up in the turbo trainers. In that case, you'd wanna plug in your tax turbo trainer because those features only work when it's connected to a main supply. But I think you'll agree, amazing technology, 
I wonder where it's going to go. That marks the end of today's video and a few suggestions of how you can make your turbo sessions better. If you have any suggestions, please put them in the comment section down below and share them with this community. Equally, if you have any questions, please put them in that section as well. Big thanks to Tax and Garmin for supplying the props in today's video. I'll put links in the description for all the stuff that I mentioned. Thank you and see you guys soon.